Okay, I actually started this, but then my camera messed up. So, I've actually already got the wash part of the top of the Bluebird on. Now, I will, and when I put this red part on, it's the same way as I did the blue, but I didn't know the camera was going to mess up. So, what I'm going to do is put a little wash of water because I'm using thinned acrylics in a similar fashion as you would watercolors. So I've just brushed mixed a red color and a little bit of burnt sienna to give me the underbelly color of my bluebird. And using just the tip of that angle brush and working that color that we laid in along that edge to do the little breast part of the bluebird. Now we will take, and I'm having the worst look with paper towels today for some reason. We're going to take and put a little, little bit of water right back here at this edge and with just a touch, ever so light touch of burnt umber paint and you can almost see it just kind of puddle that little bit of, of brown there and that's going to be just the little buff area at the, the underbelly side of the bluebird and we bring it almost to the red color but not quite it's just where the two colors fade they'll just kind of meld together so while some of that dries because I can't really go back into the blue yet we'll base coat in this little beak and I'm just using the little point of the angle brush this is one of those mixed media angle brushes like I used the round brush on the coneflower video. I had actually used this one the other day just experimenting with it and I kind of liked it. I thought it was pretty cool so that's the reason I got the round brush. So I was I was really pleased overall with the the use of the brushes and, and how they've performed so far. Let me get a touch of black out so we can get ready to do the eyeball. But before we do that, what I'm going to do is another ever so thin coat of water, just a little bit, and I'm going to pick up some of that same blue color on the corner of the brush, but then I want to deepen it with a, a tad darker blue, and I think I'm using true blue, I believe it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to start right at that top following the outline of the bluebird bring it all the way down and then quickly because that paper is wet we want to work that blue into the lighter blue that we already put there and you'll notice how it's it's just about going to follow that path and fade together and create that deeper shadow on top of the blue that we already put there. So we're going to leave that alone for now. I want to deepen this little area of brown right here where you would imagine under the wing because we I don't do a whole lot of realism in these little birds. I just want the subtle effect so that you know it's a blue bird by the colors that are there. But I, I do have to have some similarity to what the actual birds look like. Uh, being a bird watcher, I guess I just have to have a little bit of what they actually are. Now I'm going to, with just a little bit of burnt sienna on the brush, I want to just kind of stain the outer edge of the beak some so that it's not so bold, bold, bright yellow. And with that same ruddy red breast mixture and a little, little wet on the brush, I just want to intensify that right up under the 
the breast and, and work work a little extra of the color down. And then that pretty much is going to take care of that. So that looks pretty good. Now we will take a liner brush and I'm just going to take some black and pull in his little feet and leg looking things. Okay. And then we are going to do his eye. I'm going to paint the the circle of the eye. And then I want to take some thinned white. Actually, this is warm white. I use very little white white unless I'm wanting a color that I'm mixing it with to stay more true. I tend to use this warm white or a soft white color. So I want to give the little eye ring look. It's very rainy weather here today and when the weather is like this I don't have very good eye days. I suffer from chronic dry eye, which means my eyes run water and pour water and then they create such a blurry look for me sometimes. I feel like I'm looking through a glass of water just to see, but that's all part of it. Okay, so there's my little directional spots in the eye. And then I want to put just an ever so tiny, tiny little, the little nostril dot in the beak because I just, I like to have that little look there. Then I want to set him on some ground. So we're going to take that, that angle brush and just with a little side load of the, the burnt umber, just kind of do a wash of brown. And then I'll go back and I'll pick up a little more on the brush once I've got that initial wash there. And then just pull in some harder lines of color. Just to kind of stain that bottom edge and, and give the give a little more detail to the, the bottom or the, the ground area, I guess. Now I want to, if I can thought I had a different brush out, but we'll make this one work. Let me get a touch of this honey brown, and I'm going to add a little flower, and we'll do the little basting cone flower there, and we'll do another little small one right there. And these are just going to be in a brush mix of yellows. I think I've got two different colors of yellow and then we'll we'll maybe put a, a touch of of burnt sienna on the, the corner of the brush just to add a little interest to the, the petal color. So let's see what we can get out of this. And I just kind of go back and add a little bit more paint color each time. And all I'm doing is it's a touch, press, pull and lift motion kind of all at the same time. I actually used to refer to it as Priscilla Hauser's leaf technique because that's how I learned how to make leaves was watching her demo on the Carol Duvall show and that was the way she did them. And so I incorporate this stroke to make a lot of my petals when I paint because it just works for those. Add a little bit more burnt sienna to some so that it, that burnt sienna in there just kind of creates an, an automatic little shading that so you don't have to go back and do a whole lot of foo-foo to these kind of little cone flowers. So that would be the little flower petals. Now 
plant and get that little angle brush that I like using so much. And we're going to put just a little bit of burnt sienna and float about half of that cone of the flower. This one, the paint is still a little bit wet. And then I want to go back with just a touch of burnt umber and go just along that bottom edge of the burnt sienna just to deepen it and it kind of sets it more into the the flower and I threw away all my good green paint a while ago because I needed a bigger piece of palette paper so now I will get out some more green and we'll see if we can add a little stem and some flower I mean some leaves and I'm just brush mixing the light and the dark green on the same little angle brush and we'll pull in pull in a little stemmy looking things and let's see we can give some kind of an effect of a leaf here with this Put one up here, up a little higher, and then we'll add one there. Let's see, need something else right in here. Let's just pull a leaf in, and that can kind of look like it's coming from behind. So there's the basic little blue bird with some additions of the little cone flowers and one more step to do and what we want to do is put a little bit of a shadow of the burnt sienna I was waiting for the tops of those petals to dry some right under the cone Let's see if my hand cannot be in the way here to kind of set the set the petals into the cone. Now we need that little highlight because my little highlight stroke is going to kind of glow when it needs to. And I want one more one more little thing on the bird. I want to deepen right around his eye to make his eye pop. So I've just got a tiny little side load of that darker blue but then I blot most of it back off just to just to accentuate that eye just a little bit more I felt like he got a little lost in the oh that got a little dark didn't it let's see if we can go back and fix that oh thank goodness for water Okay, so I would call that a finished painting. Thanks.